August 1969, the disaffected Catholic population of the Bogside took to the streets to confront the Royal Ulster Constabulary in the wake of a Protestant apprentice boys parade in the city. The violence, which was a manifestation of long-standing political grievances, was so extreme that in an unprecedented step, British troops were deployed into Derry. This decision by the British government under Prime Minister Harold Wilson was to shape the future of Northern Ireland for over 30 years. They moved straight into one of the worst hit streets on the edge of the bog side, carrying with them their ready-made barbed wire barricades and lining up in battle formation across the street where the air was foul with smoke and tear gas. The stones and petrol bombs ceased and slowly the Bogside fighters approached the newly installed barbed wire barricades. Using previously unseen archive footage, we reveal the inside story of what became known as the Battle of the Bogside. This was the scene in Derry today as a new batch of British troops arrived to take over security duties at Bogside and other strategic points in the city. 300 members of the 1st Battalion, the Queen's Regiment, from Lingfield, Surrey, came ashore from the troop landing ship Sir Tristram at the Royal Naval Maintenance Base. They brought all their own equipment, jeeps, lorries and even their own bus. An advance party under Lieutenant Colonel Charles Millman had ar arrived earlier in the city. Another 125 troops are due in Belfast tomorrow aboard the normal sea ferry. This will bring the number of troops in the city of the 1st Battalion, the Queen's Regiment, to 500. As I talk to you today, 
I'm conscious that my words are being heard simultaneously across many time zones, climates, and terrains. Wherever you are deployed in the world, you should be assured that I and the whole nation are deeply thankful for the part you play in helping to maintain peace around the globe. In these present times, no less than in previous years, the men and women of our armed forces undertake their duties in the knowledge that danger often lies ahead. They know that many have died in the service of our country and that difficulties are ever present. With this in mind, the armed forces have recommended that for those servicemen and women who have given their lives during operations, a special emblem and scroll will be granted to their next of kin. I'm pleased to be associated with such an initiative, which is in keeping with the tradition established during the First World War. And so I have asked that this emblem should be known as the Elizabeth Cross. This seems to me a right and proper way of showing our enduring debt to those who are killed while actively protecting what is most dear to us all. The solemn dignity which we attach to the names of those who have fallen is deeply ingrained in our national character. As a people, we accord this ultimate sacrifice the highest honor and respect. Around the world, Prince Philip and I have always been impressed by the way the Commonwealth War Graves Commission tends to the graves and memorials of those servicemen and women who lost their lives during the First and Second World Wars. And now the Armed Forces Memorial, established at the National Memorial Arboretum, bears the names of British service personnel who have died on operations since that time. To these collective memorials, we now add a new and deeply personal commemoration. I greatly hope that the Elizabeth Cross will give further meaning to the nation's debt of gratitude to the families and loved ones of those who have died in the service of our country. We will remember them all.
If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, dust whom England bore, shaped and made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's, breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by the sons of home. And think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less. Give somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sight and sounds, dreams happy as a day, and laughter, learned to friends and gentleness, in hearts at peace, under an English heaven. <laughs>